An abstract class and an interface are two ways to require a class to have a certain structure. But where an abstract class can contain properties, fields, and methods, which it can share with its subclasses, interfaces have no body and are only a contract telling classes which methods they must implement. In this lesson, I show you an example of using both. So this is a good example here of an abstract class. You have an abstract class person, and then you have a class employee, which inherits from person, and a class customer, which inherits from person. And in our application, we're going to always be instantiating either employees or customers, but never persons. The abstract class also says in this statement here that any subclass which inherits it must implement get name tag, which employee does and customer does. Notice that they implement them differently. So an employee has his first name printed on the name tag, whereas a customer has his title plus his last name printed on his name tag. We're assuming here that all customers are males for this example. So we also see here that the abstract class, even though it's abstract and can't be instantiated, shares properties with its subclasses. Notice also that employee goes on to define itself further by having a date of employment property, whereas the customer defines itself further by having a date of acquisition property. Now let's see how we consume these classes. Let's create an employee. So here we have an employee that has certain information in its properties, and we're going to print out its name tag. We'll go ahead and run that. And we see that Jim is printed out, which is correct, because the employee was instantiated, has all of these properties inherited from its base class, or the abstract class person, as well as a property date of employment. And when get name tag is executed, it prints simply the first name. Now let's instantiate a customer. So we have a customer with some information and we're gonna print out its name tag. And when we do, it says Mr. Thompson, which is his last name. And we see that indeed the customer gets all of the properties from the subclass, adds another property of its own, which we defined. And when get name tag is executed, it prints out the last name because he's a customer. So now to this scenario, let's add an interface. This interface that I'm going to add is a flashcard. And all interfaces start with I, so by convention. So this is an I flashcard. And it has required methods just as an abstract class has required methods. The required methods of the I flashcard are get flashcard question and get flashcard answer. Now where we're going with this is Say we want to enable our employees to open up a little program which tests them with flashcards on the customers that they're responsible for. So they're going to a conference and they want to have in their head when they get to the conference the departments of each of the customers that they're going to meet. So this interface is going to be applied to customer. So customer now inherits person and I flashcard. And I flashcard states that any class which inherits it must implement get flashcard question and get flashcard answer. So if we try to run this, we're going to get an error. And the error is customer does not implement interface member get flashcard answer or get flashcard question. So let's fix that. And Visual Studio has a very nice way to fix that. You just click here, implement interface I flashcard, and it implements the methods for you, which is very nice. So we could actually run this now, and it would compile. Now we need to return something sensible here. So this is a customer. What do we want the employee to see when the flashcard of the customer is displayed? What is the question? The question would be his full name, for instance. So we return first name plus last name. And what is it that we want the employee to be able to remember? Let's say the department. 
and still compiles very nice. So now let's add another customer. So we can have a couple flashcards here. So now we have our second customer. And now what we want to do is go through all of the flashcards and print them out. So let me explain this code here. We are creating a collection of flashcards, which are of type I flashcard. We're adding each of the customers we've created to the flashcards collection. Then we're iterating through the flashcards and we're writing the question. And the question of the flashcard is get flashcard question. This is misspelled. Let me show you real quickly how to correct that. You change the spelling here and then rename it everywhere. So question, super. So back to the explanation of interface. So we're moving through all of the flashcards and here we're calling get flashcard question on the flashcard. Now we know that if this is a flashcard, if it implements the iFlashCard interface, we know that it must have a get flashcard question method. Otherwise it won't compile. And then we wait for user input and then we show the get flashcard answer, which we also know that it has because it's part of the interface. So let's see how this works. If we run it, it says question, Joe Thompson. Now I have to think, hmm, what is his department? I hit enter, marketing, ah yeah, okay. Now, Hank Anders, what is his department? Research, ah yeah. So you can see how this is a little application which allows the employees to memorize information about their customers. Now, somebody has a good idea that these flashcards work so well when the employees go to the conferences, they know so much about the customers that the customers seem or they feel so taken care of and they start buying more products that we're going to implement this flashcard concept on other classes as well. So let's say we have a product class or a project class, let's say, and we want the employees to also memorize information about projects that are going on in the company. Then we could just go down here and create a class project. And the project class has, for instance, a title and a description. And the project class inherits i flashcard. Now again, if we try to run this, it says, no, you can't run this because project, which we defined as implementing i flashcard, does not implement the methods which flashcard demands of it. Namely, get flashcard answer and get flashcard question. So using the nice Visual Studio interface, we implement the interface here. And the question is going to be, just show the title, and the employee will be tested on the description of the title. So let's make some flashcards here. Or I mean some projects, which will be flashcards. So we can create a project one, which has a title Smith and Sons and the description, 20 real estate buildings to be analyzed and put on sale. And project two, which is reboot 2010. And it is an internal project which aims to increase sales by 120% in 12 months. Now, because project is a type of flashcard, we can say flashcards add project one and flashcards add project two. And now when we run this, the magic happens. Question, Joe Thompson, mm, he was marketing, is that right? Yes. And Hank Anders, research? Yes. Now, question, Smith & Sons. Ah, yeah, that's a project. What was that about? Ah, 20 real estate buildings, right. And Reboot 2010, what was that about? 
ah, internal project with aims. Ah, now I understand. So you see that the employee is now taking flashcards, but you can imagine that anything could be a flashcard. And all you have to do to implement the flashcard is say what you want is the question and what you want is the answer. Now, a nice feature of interfaces is that you can implement as many interfaces as you want for a class. So, for instance, you might have an iLogger interface, which logs information about the class to a database. And so you would want iLogger on employee, customer, and project. And then you could put them all in a collection, a list of iLogger, and then send them to a logger service, which logs all their information. Or you might have an iConfirmation interface, which confirms both projects and employees internally. When an employee is hired, then he has to be confirmed. And a project, when it's started, it also has to be confirmed. And this is a similar process, let's say. So you can create a confirmation service, and this confirmation service says, don't give me projects and employees, but just give me an iConfirmation object, and I'll know what to do with it. Then as your application grows and you add other classes that need to be confirmed, you can have those classes implement iConfirmation, and immediately those classes can be sent to the confirmation service to be confirmed. So in this lesson, we learned two very powerful aspects of object-oriented programming, abstract classes and interfaces. The takeaways in this lesson are, one, each class can only inherit one abstract class, but can inherit many interfaces. And two, an abstract class can share its properties, fields, and methods with its subclasses, but an interface is simply a contract defining which methods its inheriting classes must implement.